He's got the fight won, and he's in there with one of the most dangerous fighters in the business, right? And he says, let's do this. And they both oblige, and they go in and just start. One second left in a knockout like that. That's like movie shit. It's one of the greatest moments in UFC history. Without, it's, it's the fight of the year. If something beats that fight of the year, holy shit. I don't want to see the two guys that are involved in that fight at the end of the fight. I got. I got to be honest with you. I don't know if it was the best fight of the year. Yeah. Because I'd have to. Go, I'd have to I need it to list felt like one. Max was winning the vast majority of yeah. the fight. I think the lasting memory is the fact that they fought like that for the last ten seconds. Yeah. But what did you make of that one? And what was your reaction? Because I got a lot of shit for me kind of putting my hand on my head like this, but. It kind of, to me, was like when that little boy from Home Alone realized his parents were gone and he was like yelled and he screamed and he grabbed his head because I had a real oh shit moment. You know, towards the end, Max, obviously his confidence grew because just like Justin, in the way that he can build a fight now, that is one of Max Holloway's specialty. He's building a fight, getting into the fight, and by the end of the fight, solidified himself of whether he's a victor or the loser of the fight. And, and Max definitely did that. He built the confidence over time and over time, especially in that fifth round. So once the end of that fight came, he grew the confidence. He grew the cojones to say, meet me in the center, Mr. BMF, and let's get this done. And, and that right there is exactly what that title is about. If the cards was flip and Justin was up, if he felt like he was up, I knew he would give me that 10 second shot. So he's a bad man. And, and I don't know if I ever gonna share the octagon with him again. He's a legend, brother. These are the type of, these are the type of fights, these are the type of stuff you do to edge your name in the history books. And uh, I'm just happy that I was the one landing, you know? He, he, he missed some shots, I, I was getting hurt by the wind. Holloway goes, no, I'm beating him the whole time and I'm willing to throw it away and just go, all right, now this is for the bad mother belt. Right now, we're gonna see, I established myself as the better fighter. Now, let's see who the baddest mother is. And he decided to go there, throw the dice, and then knock out Gaethje, a guy who was known for his knockout power in that range. He was better than him. I did not expect that. When watching Max Holloway, who's one of my best buds, in there this weekend, this guy was floating, man. He was so free of any worry. He was so free of any concern. He was allowed to just go out and do the thing that he loves to do more than anything in the world in that fight. And he looked bigger. He looked like he was in phenomenal shape. And he was moving around that octagon so freely and so effortlessly that I was like, wow, he is fighting as good as I've ever seen him fight. Max Holloway take it on Justin Gaethje for the BMF. Now, whoo, this fight, I believe made this card. I feel like if we did not have Max and Justin Gaethje on this card, I feel like this card would have been a letdown. Just to be completely honest. The way Max went out there and was so on point, so calm. I, I think when you grew up in Hawaii and you grew up in the way that Max Holloway did, he's dealt with a ton of adversity, man. And he's had a lot of street fights along the way. That's just kind of the nature of yeah. you know living there. And I think nothing kind of phases him at this stage, at this stage, you know, he's seen the worst of it and this was no different. And he had a ton of time in that octagon where, I don't know, he, he just brought that composure, that calmness, and of course that toughness, you know, the, the dude's something special, man. Yeah. You know, we always talk about Max is very long. I feel he's very long for the division. And he says he has T-Rex arms. He has a very short uh, reach, but he did a good job of controlling the void. And each time Justin Gaethje tried to get to him, he would always uh, hit him with beautiful combinations and go lateral and reset the distance and the void. And I felt like Max Holloway was doing a very good job of really creating that distance where it was making Justin a little bit of com uh, uncomfortable because he wasn't staying necessarily staying in the pocket when Justin would come Lily uh, Linear uh, 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 Max Hall was pretty much just leaving and I think there was a couple fakes that uh, that that could have allowed a guy like Gage to get, get in there a little bit closer and pretty much go for broke 
Justin Gagey was loading up too much. Mm. He fell in love with his power. He underestimated Max Holloway. He was just swinging with everything he had, looking for the knockout shot and throwing leg kicks. First of all, Max Holloway's legs, I mean, titanium yeah. shin bone step Crazy. aside because he took a lot of leg kicks and he's still walking now. He's not on crutches, he's not even limping. But the footwork, the ringsmanship, right? The way that he owned the octagon and he wasn't loading up, jabbing to the body, coming upstairs and hurting him. There was a few times he almost finished that fight. At the end of round one, timed a beautiful spinning back kick, lands right on the nose, breaks the nose. Yeah, he took that knee to the nose, the, the kick to the nose um, at the, was it the end of the first, first round, just seconds left, or if not, zero time left, took that kick to the nose, which plays a huge, huge part in potentially moving on in the fight, because now you can't breathe the way you want to breathe in that fight. Uh, the jab was on point for Max. Max was switching his stance enough to keep Justin guess guessing. The, the spinning back kicks to the body were throwing him off too, not knowing how to catch him. And there's every mo it seemed like every opportunity <clears throat> that Max was able to hit him with something and throw him off, they were landing right at the right moments. When Justin was getting a little bit of momentum, he got hit with something like, oh, made me a little wobbly. Where I think that when the fight started to get away from him, there was no switching to plan B. Like you got, I think it should have been more of what happened in the third, in the, in the last 10 seconds, if he needed to get that fight going. He thought he was going to go right through Max Holloway. Yeah. He really did. And, I, and he was looking for the knockout constantly. You can't do that. When you're looking for the knockout, you telegraph the shot. He was swinging with everything he had. He wasn't setting it up. And other than throwing hooks, he was just throwing leg kicks. Yeah. Yeah. Step aside, left up, Larry. Leg kick, Larry. That's what we're going to call Justin Gagey from now on. And listen, you know, he learned a very, very valuable lesson because he didn't have to take this fight. He was the next contender for Islam Mahachev. He was the rightful contender yeah. for the lightweight title. That just went up in flames. Justin Gaethje deserves boatloads of credit, not just for his role in this ultimate highlight at the end of the fight, but for accepting this fight, for defending a belt yes. that had never been defended before. Yeah, you can say he... he he cleared five million probably net on the night or something like that, right? As a pay-per-view point earning defending champion, right? But Justin Gaethje deserves a lot of credit. I I thought Gaethje, I picked Gaethje in this one. Um, I just thought he was going to kind of be too big, too strong. But you know what it was, was Max was just too long and too fast. He was moving. He was quick. He stuck him. Um, I don't want to say he was unhittable, but Justin was not connecting a lot on him. He was landing leg kicks, but as far as his punches, they weren't connecting a lot. So Max had an incredibly impressive performance. You know, when you talk about BMF and what does it mean, the, the BMF is a title that is peer driven. The, the guys and gals in the locker room want to be known amongst their peers as a tough guy as somebody that would fight when it was easier to stay home, as somebody that would get up when it was easier to stay down. That's how they want to be known. Fighters quit all the time, but you don't ever want the locker room to know it. And when the locker room does know, they don't say it because eventually their time's gonna come and they don't want it said about them. I mean, I'm just sharing with you. There's a massive different level of respect that the competitors have. So a BMF, that is the belt and the title amongst the athletes. And I don't know what Max is going to do with it, but I can tell you what I hope he does. Whether he stays at 55 or he drops to 45, I hope he defends it. I respect Holloway even more so now. I mean, the guy took the most dangerous fight in the UFC against the most violent guy in the UFC, in the history of the UFC and what he was able to do right now, Kamaru, he has said whether he wants to challenge anybody for the BMF, whether he wants to go up to 155 pounds, whether he wants to go and 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 and, and fight Ilya Tupora in Spain at 145 pounds. And guess what? That big money fight with Conor McGregor. So Max Holloway, maybe the greatest volume boxer in UFC history. He's known for a lot of things. Greatness, never knockout power per se. He had the recent knockout against Chan Sung Jung, the Korean zombie. And, you know, say what you want about that. A tremendous highlight, but not this. And maybe at that point of the fight, Max Holloway doesn't think that Justin Gaethje is capable of finishing him. 
But no, right? Like he's done this before. He pointed to the center of the octagon against Ricardo Lamas at UFC yeah. 199. This is just the cloth from which he is cut.